a guy was talking about his dad and he asked his dad, he was a struggling alcoholic, recovering alcoholic. He said, dad, do you think you'll be sober the rest of your life? In this episode, I'm lucky enough to be joined by financial advisor, dad of four, Joseph Peck, where amongst other things, we talk about the importance of showing your children how to effectively manage their mental health. Dad Mind Matters, helping men to safely navigate family life without losing their minds. Lived experience podcasts about mental health, parenting and marriage on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Well, I want my kids to be educated. I want my kids to be patient. I want my kids to be prayerful and they're not doing it. Well, yeah, my son is nine. The other one is seven and I've got a four-year-old. But if I instill these habits that we pray before bedtime, we're praying when we wake up, we read books before bed, we don't watch TV. I teach my kids that you need to be exercising. It helps not just your physical, but it helps your mental capabilities. He could be in very good shape and he could be very successful and he won't necessarily have a lot of uh, mental health issues when yeah. he's in his 20s if he does these things and stays with these habits, right? So the payoff is in the long term. Like keeping them consistent as we're young, that's and early on, that's where the success lies. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And actually, you, 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 you touched on mental health, and a lot of the podcast content I talk about is around trying to support other dads with their mental health. I've struggled with depression for years. I've got OCD, so for me, it is an ongoing. And I have five musts of things I do every day, which actually do help me get through the day. Whether it be a cold shower, whether it be saying a prayer, whether it be meditation. I, I, and my children are interested. They're like, why do you do those things? And I, and I, I, I said, because it just keeps me on the right track. I do it every right. day. It's five things that happen every day. And something I, I, I learned from saying a prayer before I go to bed, just thankful, grateful for what I have in my life. And 10 things. And the first four are my wife, my three children, the fact that we've got a roof overhead, the fact there's food in the fridge. It's amazing when you think, Actually, I just suddenly feel a lot happier and a lot more grateful that those right. 10 things that you can very easily take for granted, not everyone has that stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, is that when you open up your mind to be grateful, things do get better around you yeah. because you appreciate the things more. And you realize that not everybody has this. So I'm actually in a good spot. Everything's crazy. Things are stressful but I'm okay for right now. And that, me that mentality of gratitude and appreciation, I love that you said that, that really does help for, from like a mental health standpoint. And those, those small like five musts that you have, I think so many people will look at that and say, well, when my child asks me, why do I go that? Why do I go on a run when I'm done? You know, what do I tell him? Do I tell him that I'm struggling mentally and I need to explain to him the dopamine and, and all this different things of what happens when I go and exercise? No, just tell your child, hey, I do this because it helps me. Well, mm. dad, why does it help you? It helps me be a better father and it helps me be a better person to lead the family and to be in your life. Well, how does it do that? You'll understand when you're older. I know you don't want to hear that, but why don't you give it a shot? You're upset. You're frustrated with homework. Go, go run around outside for a little bit. Come yeah. back in two minutes. See how you feel, right? You don't need to get into the weeds and explain to them exactly how everything helps no. you how the cold shower affects all the chemicals in your brain and how the gratitude really helps you open up your mind kids aren't going to understand that but they will see that you're doing it and then when they're older they're going to have these habits that they saw you do and they're going to realize oh I, I get why dad was doing this i get why mom was doing this yeah i think if you raise your children to be functioning positive helpful adults You've done it. You've succeeded. Right. I think there's so much that I definitely remember. My parents always worked, even at the weekends. For example, I was saying earlier, painting the deck or just gen just doing a lot of the stuff that you can do yourself. Because not only is it saving you money, but you feel good about looking after yourself. And I think, obviously, a lot of people who struggle with mental health, the idea of being grateful for anything can sometimes feel like, oh, I just... It, it's a sugar-coated throwaway comment, but actually it annoyingly it does work. It really does work. Yeah. Sometimes when I feel like I can't bother to do some of the stuff I know I've got to do, I try and reframe it that I get to do it. I don't have to do it. It's like, I get to do this. There are a lot of people who don't get to get up and go and have a job, but would give their right arm to have a job. I get to do this. And that just changes the perspective of, so you're, you're pretty lucky. Yeah. And see, I, I think one of the things that is often discounted is productivity. 
right? One of the things that helps mental health the most is doing something. Yeah. Right. One of the ways that can really pile on depression and really pile on everything is when we sit in our corner and we just huddle up and we don't think we don't want any outside activity. We don't want the sunshine, right? We don't want anything. But if you can get up and just say, sure, go ahead and say it. This sucks. Life sucks. Yeah. I hate everything. Go do something. Go do something. Stock shelves. Go for a walk in the park. Productivity, being a part of something and participating in yeah. something will help you pull yourself out of depression because you're in a different environment. And when you are so stuck in your environment, you can't see a way out. I know it's hard. I've been there. Yeah. Like you're going to feel better and your mental health will, will increase and you will be in a better spot if you go and do something, right? There was, uh, I don't remember who, I think Chris Williamson, he does a, a big podcast uh, here in the States. He's actually from the United Kingdoms as well. I think his name is Chris Williamson. He was talking about this Australian lawnmower thing where they were trying to figure out mental health and they realized that if they just got a bunch of guys together to talk face to face, nothing increased, nothing got better because, because guys talk face to face, you can talk about anything, but they realized if they called all the men into a little shed and they all work on a lawnmower together, then all the guys started opening yeah. up and helping each other solve problems, but they weren't talking to each other. They were focusing on the lawnmower. Yeah, they had to get up, be productive about something. And then they started, they were in an environment where they were comfortable and they were in an environment that they were taking care of something. They were fixing a lawnmower. Yeah, and then they really started opening up about all their problems. Being yeah, productive really helps. Yeah, and I think also, and obviously I don't want to sort of generalize gender, but I mean, I used to work in mental health and I used to work with men specifically. I think what you said is absolutely on the money. Don't make mental health the thing, make an activity the thing. And then right. men, when they feel relaxed in each other's company, may then feel happy and safe to be vulnerable and be honest. No, I think that's very astute. I've shared lots of things with the guys I train Brazilian jiu-jitsu with. The only thing I have in common with them is that you know, we dance and we do Brazilian jiu-jitsu. But in the activity, as you said, because it's not we're sitting down and talking about our feelings, which a lot of men will be like, oh, I really don't want to do that. Right. You end up doing that, but it's not the main thing. It's not the reason you're there. Men, we do want to feel productive. We want to feel like we've accomplished something, right? And just like you said, guys, men, maybe this isn't popular in today's media, but guys don't want to sit around and talk. We don't. Like you said, we don't want to sit no, around and talk about our feelings. We want to go do something. And that's what makes us feel better. I used to be in construction um, a while ago before I was in finance. And still to this day, because I'm in an office, I'm doing a computer, I'm on the phone all day. I forget that when I do go help, like I'm helping my son build a, a duck coop right now, because he got a bunch of chickens, he wants to build a duck coop and get ducks. It feels good to build something, even if it's a tiny yeah. birdhouse, a little duck house, it's not going to be very big. But you, I get to stand back and say, I built that. I did that. This yeah, is something I that I created. And there's an accomplishment there. And that's what makes men feel better. I actually contributed and I did something and I created something. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I think a lot of people get unhappy in their jobs when they don't feel like what they do matters. Right. I think if you just think I'm just pushing bits of paper around a desk, whereas I got made redundant a week before Christmas. And I, I, a lot of the time this year, I've been doing cleaning jobs. I know actually, do you know what? In a weird way, there's something very, very fulfilling about cleaning someone's house leaving that thinking i've made that noise for a family and actually there's some a it's exercise but b it's very fulfilling doing a a, a, a basic task is in a way that upgrading a, a spreadsheet is not it's not the same um, right because it was different and when you left it was improved yeah. it was dirty and now it's clean you yeah. made a direct impact that helped somebody and it, they're better off because of it absolutely I think that's a very male trait. I think men need to feel useful and productive. And I think if they don't, that's when you feel depressed. I think right. if you, there's nothing worse than being in a family where you feel like I'm not appreciated here. I don't, you, I think it's very, men are very simple creatures in that if yeah. we are appreciated, we will work indefinitely, but absolutely you know, for something, for a basic throwaway comment from your wife or your child, thank Thanks, darling. That looks really nice. So I really appreciate you doing that. Men will just keep working forever. It really Absolutely. is that simple.
Yeah, there's a, you know, on TikTok, whether it's the Tates or whatever else, good, bad, or indifferent about them, they're right. Like, I don't remember who said it, but you can make a guy a sandwich for lunch and take it to him at work. And he will talk about that yeah. for years to come. Yeah, you could have done it one time a decade ago. And yeah. we will talk about how good that sandwich was for the rest of our life because you did that. For That's it. actually all men want. They want to feel like what they they do matters to the people right. that they love the most. It really is. It is that simple. That's, and I think that's why and respected. I, yeah, I think yeah. that's why I get frustrated when I feel so many men who struggle with their mental health or are unhappy in their marriages because I just think that women say often, I mean, this is a big generalization, but you know, men are complex and I don't, they're really not <laughs> really with, with, with this all, this will resonate with you with my sons. I know that to get the best out of them, if they're hungry, they're a nightmare. If they're tired, they're a nightmare, but also if they don't feel like they're being appreciated, you know, and actually we don't probably develop much beyond the age of 10 or 11. You know, it's like, no, I, don't so. I mean, absolutely. When my kids are hungry or tired, they're, they're done for, right? They're, you're not going to reason with them. And it, it was funny when I was in high school and it's still this way to this day. You know, my wife, when I'm, when I'm snappy a little bit, she, she looks at me, she goes, what did you eat today? Yeah. And I go, I go. I haven't had anything to eat today. She goes, go get something to eat right now or I'm making you something, or right? No, I haven't, like I haven't got... developed that past the age of 12 well, years old. Well, it sounds like you've got a good wife she know? knows you. So that's, that's, yeah, I often get sent off to jujitsu when I'm yes. quiet or grumpy. I feel very grateful to have that person in my life who actually knows me better than I know myself sometimes. Um, Absolutely. You know, and I think that that's something to touch on too is that a supportive, healthy community, right? A lot of times when we're talking about mental, mental mental health or anybody's mental health, if you don't have a supportive, healthy community around you and a community can be one or two people. Like you said, your wife who knows you better than yourself, my, myself too. My wife knows me better than I know myself. If you don't have that support system, that it does make it that much easier. And, and if somebody's listening to this and saying, well, I'm not worth it and I don't have anything like it, so screw this. There are avenues out there. It can be a church. It can be a faith. It can be a library. It can be a book club. It can be Brazilian jiu-jitsu. It can be an archery club. Find what you like to do. Go expose yourself to that. Make sure it's a healthy environment. And, and you'll know a healthy versus unhealthy environment just by walking in and talking to a few people. But if you have that support network, they will help you. And they'll be able to get you out of that tunnel vision to open your eyes a little bit and maybe see something you didn't notice before, right? Because a lot of times that's what happens too. We have tunnel vision. We say everything is horrible because I can't see past exactly what I'm looking at right now. Somebody from the outside can come in and just say, hey, did you ever look at it this way? Did you ever yeah. see something like this? And that can make it or break it for a lot of people. Yeah, I think you're right. As someone who doesn't maybe know you that well, can have a completely fresh perspective. They're not emotionally linked. Anyone who's struggling with their mental health. Never underestimate that you could be the light at the end of the tunnel for someone else. Go to your local church, go to your local club, just get involved. Sometimes it literally is about, if the next day is too overwhelming, just get through the next five minutes. Literally yep. one, one foot in front of the other. That's all you've got to do sometimes. Yeah, I was listening to another, another clip. I remember who it was. I, obviously, I watch too much social media. Sorry about that. <laughs> but uh, th there was another clip where a guy was talking about his dad. And he asked his dad, who was a struggling alcoholic, recovering alcoholic, he said, dad, do you think you'll be sober the rest of your life? And his dad said, I don't know, but I'll be sober today. Nice. You know what? What a simple but powerful statement, right? Yeah. No, I, I'm not, I, I don't know about next week. I don't know about next month or next year, but I'm not going to quit my job today. And if you're struggling that much with something that dark and you're saying, maybe I'm just going to end it all. It starts with just not today yeah. and expose yourself to something better. Expose yourself to other people because tomorrow will always be better. And that's the truth of it. Just not today. Let me make it through one more day. I really hope you got some of this podcast. And as I said, I created it because I want to set up an online community to support people, specifically dads and specifically dads like myself who often struggle with mental health. If you're going through or have gone through a mental health issue, and you found a way to make your life slightly easier, and you want to share that story, please contact me. And I know it's a massive ask because no one's got any spare time, but I'm really trying to get this podcast out there. So if you have two minutes to leave me a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, that would be hugely appreciated. I hope wherever you are in the world, 
you're okay. Take care of yourself. Hey, Dad, here's a word from our sponsor. Do you miss having something interesting to read in those very odd five-minute breaks from the trench warfare that can be family life? If so, check out www.swifthalf.com. Sign up to their newsletter for jaw-dropping news, some light-hearted nonsense, exclusive offers and guides.